Project Polly Tunnel. Um, I'm really happy with it. I actually put a couple of grow bags in this summer just after it had been put up and I grew some tomatoes, lovely black from Tula tomatoes. They didn't ripen in here but it got too cold so I took them off and um, they ripened at home. Well there's still some of them are ripening at home so that's really nice to have. I'm gonna take the chance today to, it's lovely and warm in here, um, just the difference even now it's October so much warmer than it is outside it's actually getting quite cold outside. I'm gonna start one of the beds. I might get half of one of the lengths of the polytunnel done. I'm just gonna use uh, pretty much the same technique that I did when I did my garden outside. Really I would love to have done no dig but there was so much rhododendron here um, that the our digger guy he actually just pulled the whole base of the polytunnel out. There was a ton of topsoil moved from the shed area so they've moved it to the end of the polytunnel here and um, that's all ready now for me to I guess I'm just going to do it by hand, fill up the wheelbarrow and just tip into the area. I've got my wood plank just to keep a nice straight edge and then not sure what I'll do after that. I might I'll just do it in stages just to make it more manageable and uh, I might after I've put that topsoil down, I might cover it with cardboard um, just to mulch it and then put a layer of compost on. I might do that in the spring just to add to the nutrition and to stop any weeds that they are sort of starting to self-seed, you know, in the pile of topsoil out there. So yeah, I'm just going to get on and do that today and I'll show you a little bit of that. I'm thinking here to have a, a little seating area in the corner and then... That plank there is the edge of the bed on the one of the sides. Then down at the other end of that side, I'm going to have my um, like potting station. Um, I think David will build me a a nice um, staging for it. And then I'm going to have a much wider bed in the middle. That will be five feet, around five feet uh, wide. And the two, the two beds on the edges, there'll be another one on that side as well, are four feet, which I think is the optimum depth for beds. So you can reach in and they won't go right to the edge of the polytunnel because I don't want to get the wood wet or damp, uh, constantly damp anyway. So that's the plan. The polytunnel is 18 feet wide by 40 feet long and we had it put up professionally. The environment here can be very unforgiving and wild. We wanted to have it put up properly and without problems. The galvanised steel tubing has an outside diameter of 48 millimetres, which is bigger than the standard domestic polytunnel frames. We decided this would be quite important up here as the garden site is quite exposed to the elements. We're hoping it will withstand harsh winds. Fingers crossed. I'm excited to start growing in the tunnel. Even though I've not had a lot of time this year to devote to the garden, it has been particularly difficult this year with the high rainfall and the pests and diseases that it brought. It will be a game changer to have a little microclimate to grow in and protection from certain pests and waterlogging. I've never had any kind of greenhouse before we moved here, or a garden for that matter, so it will be something to adapt to and figure out as the next growing season progresses. Already I can see I'll need extra ventilation as there's been a lot of condensation build up, mainly because I've not opened the doors as often as I'd like. So some kind of mesh inserted into the doors would be helpful. As a gardener I talk about pests but the bigger picture here is to become as self-sufficient as possible but also attract as much wildlife as we can. Increasing the biodiversity here is really important to me. 
The rhododendron has, in recent years, wiped out so much of the native flora in this part of Donegal. Already my gardening style is turning out to be somewhat lazy in some respects, and what I mean by that is that I try to leave as many weeds or wild plants alone, as long as they're not doing too much damage to my crops. In fact, sometimes they are hugely beneficial. Last year, the amount of wildflowers actually attracted the pollinators so much that I didn't see any aphids on my crops. I read the buzzing of bees and hoverflies is off-putting for aphids, so they don't land. It's a balance, as we all know, of getting a good crop production but also encouraging biodiversity as much as we can. And sometimes that just means we have to deal with the holes in our salads. So when I finally got all the soil into the area of my first bed, I started to pack it down with my foot a bit and break it up as much as I could to help it settle in the space a bit. The plank of wood is really useful for keeping a straight line and holding the soil in place at the edge. For now, the beds are going to be mounded like this I'll eventually take the wood away, but I think as time goes on, when we get some wood milled, I'll make proper beds double this height to make them deeper, as the ground I'm laying them on is pretty much to the hard clay. I wonder if you can see that, that's over there in the distance, the rain falling. Can you see how the grey cloud is just, it's just falling down? Might come over this way. So that's the soil roughly laid out in the the first raised bed of the polytunnel. <laughs> That's looking quite good. It's probably about six to eight inches high at the moment. Well, the bed is now six to eight inches deep. Um, but of course that will sink. And the last section I did there, it's been raining a lot. So that was very wet and I'll let that dry for um, a few days and then once it gets a bit crumblier um, I'm gonna take a fork to it and sort of break it up a little bit more then hopefully the top will be a little bit more level and I can either put cardboard on top or um, I might just put some of that black plastic because I have it to hand um, but anyhow I want to put um, some fresh compost on the top uh, see how I get on with the rest of the polytunnel and filling it up um, and I may put the compost, I'll have to get quite a big delivery of compost because um, I have got a compost heap in my garden over there. It probably needs turning a little bit more. Um, I haven't really looked at it for a while but that definitely won't be enough to cover all the beds I'm going to do in here. My goal really is to complete all the beds before spring next year and hopefully I'll have started maybe the other side of the polytunnel next week. I also weeded, it doesn't really look like it because there's still quite a lot of green moss on the ground here but I weeded this side of the polytunnel because I've been storing quite a few things there and obviously like the weeds have sort of grown in between uh, boxes and things I've been storing. So um, it is looking a little bit better than it was. Um, so now I can 
start doing the other side as well. There's a little bit of water that is leaking in from the ground on the outside and I still need to finish the drainage outside as well but it's not too much of an issue right now.